Hello everyone, welcome back in Cool IT Help and this is new Java FX video tutorial for you. In this video tutorial session, I will tell you how to redirect console output to a text area on the GUI. Right now you can see there is an example ready for the demonstration and I have created. So we are going to redirect some system.out.println statement and system.error.println statement. So these will be redirected to the text area on the GUI. Also we are going to redirect this uh, exception that is going to be printed on console but right now this will be redirected to the text area on the GUI. So the stack trace will be printed here in this text area. So first we will see the demonstration and uh, then I will take you inside the code. So the activity is happening on this button click event. You guys are familiar about the button click event. Okay, so first we will see the demo. I'm going to click this one and you see can see this here. So this text area populated with the output that we have executed this statement system.error.println and system.out.println also the stack trace is generated and that also is redirected right here in this text area so guys this is uh, created uh, with a thread so we are reading the I will show you the implementation logic with the help of a diagram that will explain the uh, logic behind the scene so you will be able to modify this code according to your requirement and you can uh, integrate this thing in your application as well so I'm going to open this image this is the image which is uh, showing the current implementation in which the print stream is redirecting to the console the upper portion is defining the existing system but the, the bottom section is defining the new that we have implemented so instead of going the console now we will redirect the stream to the text area so what exactly we are doing whenever we want to do this we have to create a new stream object and we have to associate with the out object of a system class so the construction of the print stream is done with the help of piped output stream class and that is initialized with the piped input stream that is collecting all the stream coming from the out object whenever you write any statement out dot print ln that will that stream will be populated inside the piped input stream and this is the storage then we have executed one daemon reader thread that is executing in the background and keep checking inside this piped input stream if if something is coming inside so this reader thread will read this and convert that byte stream into a string text and that is going to be written inside this text area on the GUI so this daemon thread has important role and this piped input stream has an important role in this implementation so I hope you guys now clear on what we are going to do so I'm taking you inside the code then you can correlate this implementation with the code also this will help you to do a small changes or some major changes according to your implementation in your application so we will start here in the NetBeans the example is ready now we will start from the first file which is a start file which has a start method so initially we have created two piped input stream instance then we have declared three threads that we are going to run as a daemon thread and one boolean variable is there these three thread will be executed in the background as a daemon and this is the boolean variable quit which going to be used to kill the threads okay and this is the text area so we will hold the uh, actual text area ref uh, object reference in this reference variable text area now moving further it's very simple just uh, listen this uh, theory theoretical part then you will get all the code from the link given in the description so get all the code for all files and integrate in your NetBeans ID and then you can run it so 
in the fxml document what arrangement i have made i am showing you right now this is my fxml this is very simple we have one button and the text area one text area so uh, so this line is actually getting the object of uh, this text area that is uh, initialized once the stage is going to be initiated okay so this fx id we are catching inside the fxml document controller when we going to initialize under this one okay so it's very simple we have the reference of this object inside the fxml document controller and we have created one static variable so that will be accessible from any of the class of this project and then we are ready to add something inside the text area okay so this line is helping to get the reference of the fxml text area inside the start and this is the next line execute reader thread this is the logic where we are going to execute uh, three threads that will read uh, the streams from the piped input stream so we have uh, created instance of the piped input stream by passing the argument of piped input in stream you can see here and the actual thing is happening we are resetting the out object and connecting to the new print stream that we have created this is a new print stream associated let me show you this diagram again so you can correlate the actual thing that we have done you can see the print stream is constructed with the help of piped output stream and piped output stream is initialized with the piped input stream you can see these lines so this is the new instance of print stream that is created with the help of piped output stream class and we are setting inside the out object we are assigning the new print stream to out object okay now whatever the console output is generated that will be uh, accumulated inside the piped input stream the same way we have done for the error output stream and the further we are going to create the instance of the thread class reader thread and we are passing the reference of actual variables piped input stream and piped output stream and this close method will be invoked when we are going to close the stage because it is necessary to clean up the thread resources when we going to close our application that means we are going to close the stage so this method will be invoked and there's a logic to notify all the sleeping thread to activate and join to the current thread to complete the task then we will we will close the input stream there's a statement is mentioned this dot pipe in dot close same way has been done for the reader 2 as well this process is very fast that's why we have given a very short time interval after that we have used the system dot exit zero it's very simple to understand i suggest you first copy all the code create reconstruct all the files in your uh, uh, netbeans id and uh, structure the complete project with the code and then execute and you will be able to understand or correlate all the theory that i have explained in this video tutorial so now we are inside the reader thread class which is implementing the runnable interface so we will write the exact code to fetch the input stream and then we going to write inside the text area so here we are invoking the first thread by passing the current object as a runnable because uh, this class implementing the runnable interface so first thread is initialized and we have started this one now at line number 37 we have created the new thread instance and uh, th then we have a uh, uh, setting this thread as a daemon and then we have started this thread too also we have started the error thrower thread the in the same way 
Now finally we are inside the run method. I hope you guys are aware about the thread concept. We are implementing the renewable interface. So we have to give the, uh, we have to override this uh, run method. We have to give the logic of uh, uh, reading the stream and writing inside the text area. So this is the logic. So this un we are inside the critical section. So this is the actual condition which is checking inside the thread if there is something inside the some stream is inside the pipe input stream then the read line method is reading and then converting that thing into a string and we are appending that string in this text area that is simple so actual thing is happening in the read line so which has the logic to read the stream from the piped input stream and this is the boolean flag a boolean check to close the thread Suppose uh, this condition will execute uh, if someone has closed the thread on the GUI, closed the stage, then this will be false. And when this comes for the checking of this condition, and this will be returned from this place and the thread will be closed. The same thing is happening for the uh, reading of error from error output console from the piped input stream. So that stream is uh, being read by this read line method. So now I will show you the read line method, what we have done inside this read line method. And uh, this uh, error thrower thread. So we have uh, put on a wait condition for the particular defined time. After that is executed and printing this starting message. The, so that this code will be executed once and uh, this is not put inside the loop and rest to uh, uh, the code section will be inside the loop so they will be in the background and keep watching for the incoming in stream so this thread is always keep watching for uh, the input stream and read the input stream this way this is the read line method which has the actual uh, code implementation for reading that stream and converting into the string so this is the way in dot available this is returning the integer of which is the stream length and after that we are initialized one byte array and at line number 114 we are writing all the stuff into this byte array so whatever the stream is now written inside this byte array in the next line we converted this thing into the string and now we are ready to return the stream as a string with this method and this will be written inside the text area so this is the line where we are calling and the converted string is written inside the text area so the main logic uh, and the main uh, work of the thread to read the stream from the piped input stream and to write inside the text area on the GUI now I'm taking the build of this project and I will demonstrate you by running this example okay so this is the button click event now one more thing so inside the fxml controller we have created one action handler method and inside this we have written these two statements line number 34 and 5 that will be executed and the another uh, exception is generated to print the stack trace inside that text area so we have custom made these things to generate the output that will be redirected and written inside this text area so I will just click and you can see that so that statement line number 3435 uh, the output is generated and redirected right here inside this text area so this example is working perfectly fine all the codes are available on this link so guys get go there and just copy that code and import and set up the project in your NetBeans ID and then you can do more practice and you can modify this and you can use in your JavaFX application. I hope you guys found this video useful. Please like this tutorial and please subscribe my channel or you can press the bell icon so you will get the latest video updates on time. And guys for now, thanks for watching. Cool IT help.